Hey, welcome back everybody to Doing It With Styles this week. Um, I got a very, very special guest today. This is Mimi Gibson, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> now, most of you don't know that she is Henry Gibson's sister, right? Exactly. Right. And um, she first got her start on Laugh-In. No. Oh, that <laughs> no, would have been fun, I'm teasing. It? You actually got your start when you were just, I mean, like a year and a half old, right? You were doing modeling? I was doing calendars. Right? Yeah. I was, um, mo my dad died. Mom brought me down here uh, to Los Angeles, not here Las Vegas, but here Los Angeles. And... Um, she took me around to different photographers. I can't believe that this is a true story, but it is. <laughs> and they, they said, does she like animals? And mom said, yep. And so they started Because you always have to it. say yes, right? Well, no, I did. Because you can't make a kid like an animal really? if they don't like them. And a lot of children do not like animals very much. You know, they're a little afraid of them. If they've got a beak, they might peck them. If they've got teeth, they might bite them. So I didn't care. I liked everything. So I, I did uh, calendars for six years. And so I was the number one calendar girl in the United States. It wasn't Marilyn Monroe, Scott. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Mimi. <laughs> with all my clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I started doing commercial photography and other things. And then at two and a half, an agent saw me. She said to my mom, you want to get her in the business? And mom said, sure. And so in two days, I had my first movie, Corky of Gasoline Alley. And for those our age, we remember the comic strip. And yes. I played Clovia, and the little girl, Skizik's daughter. And it was fun. It, I had two lines. I was just a little teeny kid, and I didn't know anything. And it was great. And then I went on until I was about 20. And I left the business. I just left. Um, and I had nothing to do. I moved out of the area. I lived in um, Los Gatos for 25 years and had a goat farm. So you see how I left the business. <laughs> and so, and then I saw Paul Peterson on um, some daytime TV show. And I rarely watch daytime TV. All of a sudden, I turned it on and... There was Paul talking about how, this was in the early 90s, Paul had uh, lost so many friends to suicide who had been actors. And he was so distressed that he started a nonprofit organization called A Minor Consideration. And we all know Paul Peterson from the Donna Reed show, but he was my brother in Houseboat. And also, Years later, I found uh, a clip of us doing an ad for TWA. I was about three, he was five, and we're standing by a big airplane, and I just couldn't believe it. It brought tears to my eyes. I didn't even rem remember doing it. And so I saw Paul on this. Ring, 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 a ring, 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 ring. <laughs> I tell them never to call me here, but they do anyway. These bill collectors are just, they're atrocious. Are they after you again? Yeah, I hear still. there's jail in your future. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I called Paul. We talked. He said, Mimi, we're going back into the union. We're going to try to change the Coogan Law. Now, most people don't know what I'm the sorry, which law? Coogan Law. Coogan. Named for Jackie, Jackie Coogan. Coogan. Okay. He was um, a beautiful, if you looked at him when he was on the Adams Family playing Uncle Fester, you would have never known that he was this most gorgeous, what the hell? <laughs> 
Get rid of that thing. I am. <laughs> I'm talking here. And, and 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 what do I tell everybody? Every guest is your phone off. <laughs> yeah, left mine in the car. So. Um, well, that's because you're a professional. Of, of, oh, of course. <laughs> And uh, so when he was a little boy, he was in silent movies, and he was absolutely beautiful. Well, uh, the the I'm trying to remember the the one that he played in his his father was a fighter. Was it called the boxer? Oh, it was called the champ. The champ, yeah. Didn't he get? No, that was Jackie. Wasn't that Jackie Cooper? I think that was Jackie Cooper. Well, anyway. Anyway. We it was digress. one of the Jackies. Yeah, it was it one wasn't of the Jackie Kennedy. It was one of the cutie boy Jackies, yeah. So um, he made millions of dollars during the beginning of the film industry. And his parents were like inviting every Tom, Dick, and Harry to come live with them and distant cousins. And he was supporting everybody. And, of course, when he grew up, there was no money there. And he sued his parents, and he got some some money, but not anything near what he had made. Now, and back then, yeah, millions, millions was a lot it was of money. Mil- yes. And to just go through it like that was horrific. And so the studio heads all decided this can't happen. We've got to stop this. And uh, so they wrote the Coogan Law and passed it. But And the Coogan Law was good. It saved 10% of every child's earnings. But if you realize, and people say, oh, that's not very much. But kid actors are in the upper tax bracket. They have no deductions they have to have lessons they have an agent that's 10 percent a manager that's 15 percent so you see how the money just goes out as quickly as it comes in anyway so um the one mistake and it it applied then, but it did not apply in the 50s and 60s when I worked because most of us were independent contractors. And that was that this money was held for child actors under contract. Nobody was under contract anymore. So that's how the parents could get their hands on all the money again. Was that, was that, uh, is, did the studios do that intentionally or was it? That's the way it was then. Everybody yeah. was under contract in those days. Right. And then when it changed to independent, nobody changed the law. Gotcha. So that didn't apply anymore and the parents were whole hog into, you know, let me see how fast I can spend the money. I, I must have hit the rainbow. <laughs> so uh, Paul was very disturbed about Rusty Hamer committing suicide and the many others who did and set up a minor consideration to, uh, to help transition kids that had difficulty becoming worthwhile adults because they had no value after they weren't kid actors anymore. And he did a lot of good for a lot of people. He helped many, many, many people. Many people that you don't know he helped. Um, And so when I called him, he said, can you come and join the committee? And I said, I'm with you. I am absolutely, because I supported my family. No money was saved. And I wanted it saved for kids. And uh, at the time, both my kids had just become adults, and um, so I had my goat farm, but that was not going to stop me from doing something for the kids coming up. So I drove down from Los Gatos for uh, 
10 years <laughs> on the Young Performers Committee, and we all worked very hard. It was Paul Peterson, Jeannie Russell, Paul, me, and Johnny Whitaker. And Johnny was our secretary, and he was just a great secretary. Jeannie was our um, chair for a long time. And, and, and what was he in? He was in a TV series. Johnny Whitaker was in Family Affair. That's it. He was one of the twins. Right. And, you know, Anissa Jones, she took pills. I don't know what she did, poor thing. And so that was very traumatic to him. So things, you know, things that happen in the business affect us maybe not directly, but indirectly because you're working with kids that have problems it's a brutal business it is brutal it's even for adults yeah so yeah. Uh, you know i say kid actors are the hardest working ones because we have to learn our lines we have to uh know our our spot we have to be on time we have to act like adults, even though we're kids. And the adults, all they have to do is learn their lines, but we have to go to school. Yeah. We have to do our schoolwork. We have to do our homework at night. We have to do all this, and, and we have to please our parents and the director. So I think it's harder to be a kid actor than it is to be an adult actor. They've got a breeze. <laughs> well, the, 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 because you don't know, especially someone that started at your age, doesn't know anything different. Right, that, right. I mean, that's that's your that has been your whole world. Right. Is that why you left the, the business? Is that? Well, I'll, I'll go into that in a minute. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, or I could go into it now. Um, <laughs> I, I left because I was not getting the regular work that I got before. Right. And um, it just wasn't happening for me. And people would say to my face, we want new faces. And, you know, if that... if. I have the old face. We never were valued. In England, you know, they have a whole other method of valuing people as they come up. We do not. We have... You, you know, said in England? In England. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, that would have been nice, but that didn't happen. And so I went on to sell real estate. <laughs> so I sold real estate for about 15 years. And then my husband was um, he was a, an independent contractor with NASA and was working on, um, we moved up to the Bay Area and we lived in Los Gatos. He was working on the space station. And so I just stopped working and got a goat farm and it was really fun. I loved having a goat farm. I had uh, pygmy goats. So that's why I left the business. But I came back for the kids. We all came back for the kids. And then Melissa Gilbert and Barry Gordon, he was president of the union for a while, and he helped really spearhead our two bills that we got passed. But we got two bills passed, and it took us eight years. Wow. Eight years of every month coming to Young Performers Committee meetings, and we, we did an orientation. We'd, we'd have a meeting, then we'd go to dinner, and then we'd do an orientation. And I swear, that orientation was dynamite. We'd have ex-kid actors show up, Melissa Gilbert showed up, all, all sorts of people showed up, talked about their lives. I was the rules and regulation people. <laughs> I, would, I, I told everybody about that. We had moms talk about being parents on the set, the good and the bad of it. We had uh, one of our members, she used herself as the bad parent. She's Liz Graham, she's one of the nicest people in the world. She would never <laughs> yeah, be if that's a bad, bad one, God help you. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and we all laugh when she talked about how she was so bad. <laughs> and anyway, it was a great orientation we had, um, and now everything's on computers. And I mourn the loss of that because it really helped kids. It was good for the parents. It was wonderful. So is that still in effect today? It's just on, you know, it's on computers now. Okay. Everything's on computers. But, I mean, are the kids still protected? So the kids, so we passed a law after, in 2000, uh, and uh, we, I got to speak to the state legislature. Um, I'd done 34 movies over, you know, a couple hundred TV shows, commercials. None of the money was saved for me. And so um, I I got to speak. and And... You know, nobody impresses me, but somebody who holds all of our lives in their hands, our legislators, yes. that impressed <clears> me. <throat> and so we got that passed, and we also got a school bill passed. And the school bill was kind of hilarious. We hadn't realized why the public schools treated us so badly. We didn't realize that if your butt's not in the seat, they don't they get, get paid. They get no money. Yeah. And so it's adversarial. And uh, so we got a, a bill passed that backed up onto, and Sheila Kuehl, who's a wonderful politician in Los Angeles, she carried our bill, and she was Zelda on Dobie Gillis, a wonderful ex-actress. and uh, I loved her. <laughs> Loved her. She was just great. Her name was Sheila James, and she um, she also had another series before that. She was a great actress, but she went into politics, and she's been in politics almost her whole career. She's an attorney. She's just a wonderful woman. She carried our bill, and uh, we so we had the first bill that. Day one, dollar one, fifteen percent goes into a locked account for kid actors, and they can't access the money until they're eighteen. We didn't like that it was so young, but that's the age of maturity in California, and that's what we had to go with. So we had that, and um, then we had. It was a Bracero bill that we piggybacked the school bill onto, where families with kids that picked every, you know, the during farm seasons. Yeah, yeah I the, farm the farm workers. workers yeah. Schools got money for the kids that were absent because they were there working for their families. Right. Well, yeah, so, so are we. And so we piggybacked it onto that, and now the schools all get money from when a kid goes to work. So But we, you still have to be enrolled at the school and attend a oh, certain absolutely. a certain number of times. Uh -huh, right. uh -huh. right. So so we did those two things and then we stayed another couple of years and then we all were really tired <laughs> and we said, That's it. We've had it. And uh we left it to the other ones coming up, and uh, I think they're doing a fine job. I hope so. And that's what happened. Cool. Yeah. Now, so I want to talk about Houseboat. Oh, okay. Good. Let's talk about that, that's, Houseboat. That's probably one of the, the biggest movies that you've done, right? Yeah. It was the biggest part I ever had. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you worked with... Some of my favorite people, so yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to spill the beans on all of them. Oh, okay. So we we had Cary Grant. Yep. Sophia Loren. Yep. Martha Heyer. Yep. Who who I had a crush on her, and I, I she was one of those people that you saw. Oh, I oh oh oh, and there she is, there she is. Yeah, yeah. And, and just like uh, yeah. Beverly Washburn, you yeah. know, everywhere you turned, there was Beverly Washburn. Yeah. So yeah. Paul Peterson, of course, right? Yeah. Um, this was the guy, well, Harry Gardino, he was kind of a, a, a he ended up being a, a, a character actor. He yeah. always played it. And the other guy that I really liked was Eduardo Cianelli. Never worked with him, never met him. He was on the movie. Yeah, I know. But he you never got Sophia's to. He Sophia's father. Okay. Oh, gotcha. But we, uh, oh. I he always plays a heavy. Wait, wait, wait. 
wait, I did work with him in the wedding scene at the end, but it was so brief and there were so many people in that. We yeah. never talked to him or had anything. I mean, the only acting he really did in the wedding scene was to be a conductor to Charlie Herbert that you didn't mention. Right. Um, and he played my younger brother. Um, and, you know, directed him into where they were saying their vows. But I, I have no idea about him. Okay, so Cary Grant. Okay. He, now, how old were you when you were in this movie? I, I was about eight. Okay. So you weren't really, did you know who Cary Grant was? Oh, the, sure. Okay. You know, as you grow up and right. when you're working in the business, you know who everybody is. Right. It doesn't. Matter so you, you were aware that he was kind of a big deal. Oh, I and and Paul remembered that all three of us before we got our got the roles, we we were chosen, and then we had to go interview, uh, like in front of Cary Grant, but not really interview, just talk. Right. And because Cary had the last say. Right. And uh, Paul said, I was yakety yakking, which I never do. <laughs> yeah, and, I've noticed that. <laughs> and, and he said, Carrie looked over my head and looked at Mel and um, Mel Shavelson and Jack Rose, who were the producer and director, and nodded his head. <laughs> so good, good for me. Yeah. So, um, so Carrie Grant was good. Great. He was a, a lovely man, but he act, had no idea what to do with kids. He just <laughs> didn't relate to kids at all. And so he would give us advice. You know, don't get fat. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't feed your husband fattening food. Yeah, uh oh, sure. And, you know, you're little and you know that you're going to do whatever you want. You're yep. not going to do what he <laughs> says. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. And so he'd say things like that to us. And uh, that was that was what he, he did. And he was nice. He didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't have heirs or anything like yeah. that. And then there was Sophia. I, that, that was my next one. So Tell us about her. Wonderful, beautiful. You, you know, you talk about Martha Heyer. Martha Heyer was a gorgeous woman. Well, Sophie, I'm sorry, Sophia just knocked her out of the ballpark. Sophia was stunning. She was stunning. She was funny. She was personable she was everything good everything good and we loved her and she would sit with the moms nobody sits with the moms <laughs> and she would because she just you know she'd been brought up poor and she had her first birthday party she ever had in her life on that set which really? broke my heart i i just couldn't imagine it. So I have a funny Sophia story to tell. Oh, please. And so Sophia was, she was outside. We were all sitting, waiting for them to set up lighting, I think, or something on the stage. And and um, she was the big up-and-coming young starlet. And everybody, you know, wanted her to wear their clothing item, jewelry, whatever. And so she got constant gifts coming on the set. So it was always exciting to see what <laughs> Sophia was getting. And oh, look what I got. Oh, what, oh, uh oh. <laughs> and so, so she gets this package delivered, and it was small. And so you could tell it was probably jewelry. And she says, oh, well, I wonder what is for me. And she's opening it up, you know, so that we can look. And she opens the, takes all the paper off. And, and the packet, the box underneath was velvet. So uh, that's a good sign. And she opens it up. And then she looks at it. And... And she, she 
has this funny look on her face. And she sees this and says, she holds it out on her finger like this and says, what is this? Now they look like black pearls, right? But my mom laughed and said, they're pop beads. <laughs> <laughs> and Sophia was horrified. She was just, she'd never seen pop beads. They didn't look like fine jewelry. And she, she. Wait, she, are you telling me that this these, is, these are, this was the same ones? This is it. And she says, she says to my mom, you want it? <laughs> and mom says, yep. <laughs> That's awesome. And so mom grabbed it. And when she'd wear it, people would look at her and say, you know, it's like it's it's got a sheen like a pearl, looks like a pearl, but there's something not right. You know, yeah. you can't see the knots. It's uh, There's something not right about it. And people would say to her, what is that? And mom would go, pop beads. And I have a story to go with it. <laughs> so that's, that's my... Sophia's story. Well, when you came in wearing them, and I, my first thought is, "Wow, those are those are some big pearls." Oh yeah. Because you know? <laughs> what do I know? I mean, I'm you know, I don't know anything about that. So, so I think I think that that's a hilarious story. I mean, she's from Italy. They didn't have pop, pop beads, beads there. How would she know that? And what nut sent her pop beads? Like she'd wear them, you know. He's going off again. I'm telling I don't you. know. You just can't stay away. Try it now. Yeah, you. So that's okay. So Paul was my. What are you oldest. laughing at over there? <laughs> You've done that. Yes, you have. I got. I got proof. I got proof on tape. <laughs> so. Sorry, we're talking to the audience over here. They're laughing at us. So pa, Paul and Charlie were the boys. I was the girl. I was kind of a prissy girl. So we all got along. I'd worked with Charlie, like, on five or six movies. We knew each other really well. And um, Paul, I didn't know well at all. And so I kind of stayed away from the boys, and the boys kind of stayed away from me because I was a girl, and yeah. they were a boy, and yuck. And, uh, but we got along fine. You know, when we were working together, we were professional just like everybody else. And, uh, and it was a happy set. You know, uh, Mel Shavelson was our director and he was just a wonderful man. And Jack Rose, the producer, wonderful. They were just absolutely the best. What was your, what was your favorite thing about the business? What did you enjoy most? I, I enjoyed doing live TV. Really? Yeah, it was the best. Yeah. I enjoyed it. What was it. it about the live TV that you enjoyed? Yes. People's phones going off? or Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'd be canned. You'd be so canned. Nobody would ever look at you. I mean, that would be it. Um, yeah, or maybe that it's was, a good thing that this is my studio. Yeah, if my partners ever thing. found out that happened, I'd be dead. <laughs> um, you uh, you have to step up to the plate. Right. And you yeah. have to deliver. And if you don't... They don't hire you ever again. What was your What was your favorite live TV show that you appeared on? Oh, it was Days of Wine and Roses. Uh, we did it live on Playhouse 90. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, um, and with Cliff Robertson and Piper Laurie. Yeah, and it was just you could tell it was important. And how old were you at that time? Oh, maybe seven. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My next favorite was Red Skelton. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was great. He was a stinker, but he was great. He he would try to make you make a mistake. Really? Yeah. He'd make faces at you. <laughs> He'd say his line a little off, you know. But And this was still when you were young? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So he, he was great. Do you have any film clips of that? Is there any film clips of anything anywhere? I can't anywhere? find, if anybody can find... I will look. Red Skelton I for will me. Look. I have one Jack Benny. And it's very much like Beverly's. It's that the was, same I, I, thing. I'm telling you, that was a brilliant 
that was that was brilliant. Beverly's Beverly's, yeah, Beverly's was brilliant. I, I've probably seen that a hundred times now. Yeah. And every once in a while, I'll be going through the stuff and I'll stumble across that and I go, I got to watch that. Yeah. And it, it was it's just so, so cute. Yeah. She was such a perfect straight man yeah. for Jack Benny. And, and I did the same thing years later, but it was a slightly different. Okay, I got to find and, that too. And not as. Uh, not as long as the one he did with now, her. Now, uh, Beverly had said that, that Jack Benny was really great to work with. Yeah, no. Did I, you enjoy it, too? Uh, no, uh, well, I, it was fine. Oh, we you mean were, he liked her better? He <laughs> loved her and didn't like me, I guess. He he would come out. We'd He'd not talk to anybody. I did two Jack Bennies. He'd not talk to anybody. And I, and Beverly's telling me about how much, you know, they were close <laughs> and he loved her. And it's like, what? I can't, what? Well, okay. how, many, how many years after Beverly did her skit they, oh, did you do yours? Oh, probably maybe five. Okay, so by that time he was getting burned out. Yeah, he probably was uh, sick of, of these I've had kid this actors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up over there. Yeah, um, well, who, But it wasn't just me. It was that he didn't talk to anybody. Yeah. He came out. We rehearsed. We'd all rehearse around microphones. Uh, he'd rehearse. He'd say something to the director. And then he'd leave, and he wouldn't even say goodbye or anything. And I thought, what, huh? Because, <laughs> you know, you couldn't get rid of Red. Right. <laughs> and, there, and I think, weren't there stages? I think they were right next to each other, and it was like night and day. So um, I, I just thought that was... And he usually... Well, both of the guys usually had little boys. It was lucky that you got on the show at all. Yeah. And I did eight red skeletons, so. Wow. Yeah, I was real lucky. Yeah. He liked me, and I liked him back. Yeah. So who needs Jack Benny, right? You got red skeletons. But Jack Benny, I, I have to say, red was the broad comic. Right. Jack Benny was a genius. Yeah. I mean, he could lift an eyebrow and make you break up. He well. was he was fabulous. <laughs> yeah. He he was, and that he used himself as the joke. Uh, and that was I always enjoyed that about him. It was and and how he never got past thirty nine. Yeah, he <laughs> never got and he never got past that he was a penny pincher. Yep. And he never you know it was all about him and his his weirdness. And he developed that, and I was watching a movie on the Automat, the Automats in New York, and they were talking about Jack Benny had been on doing, I guess, his radio show, and he was such a big hit, everybody loved him, and he had a big party, and he had it at the Automat, and all these stars were coming in, and he was <laughs> handing them rolls of nickels. <laughs> So that was Jack for, Benny. For, for those younger people who don't know what an automat is, an automat is the cafeteria version of yep. a vending machine. Yep. Right? Yep. You go in there and you put your, your money yep. in and you could get a sandwich, you could get pie, you could yep. get coffee, all that yeah. good stuff. And it was great food. Yeah. It wasn't like vending machine food. Yeah. It, it was actually It was good food. Fresh. Fresh yep. good food. Believe it or not. And um I I just mourn I I was in New York when I was a kid, and I got to go to a, a, an automat once. And I was it, born in New York. Oh, were you? Yeah, Long Island. Oh, yeah. nice. So, anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. do you have a favorite part that you played or yeah. something that that, that was that was it for you? What what part was yeah, that? Yeah, when you're a kid, you have... You have kind of a bucket list. Yeah. Things that, wait a second, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Bless you. <laughs> it's been very windy. <laughs> very windy. I have that effect on women, folks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Excuse me. Uh, That's okay. I, I can cut that out if I feel like it. It depends, <laughs> it depends on how you do for the rest of the yeah, interview. Yeah, how whether nice I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a stinker, so watch out. Okay. Um, so, so your favorite part? So. Or character. I had 
I had, uh, you know, I wanted to be in a Disney animated movie, which I was in 101 Dalmatians. So yippee for that. And now you did do a lot of voiceover, didn't you? Yeah. I, I did a lot. And, I said um, this for those women that couldn't understand what they were saying, so I had to come in and talk about it. Right? Little, little <laughs> girls, it's, it, it sounds like this. And, and then they go, you have to do the whole movie. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and um, and I wanted to do Wagon Train, never got it. I wanted to do uh, Bonanza, never got that. Um, and I wanted to do the Twilight Zone. Well, I never got the Twilight Zone, but I got the second best thing, and that was a one step beyond. And my um, episode was um, the dead part of the house. And it's about a little girl who moves to San Francisco with her dad. Her mother has died, and they're living with her aunt. And she has a bedroom and a playroom and she all of a sudden weird things are happening and she all of a sudden is learning how to do the Charleston and has these three dolls that she sets up and it's giving me chills <laughs> even now I can't believe it after all these years I love that part and so she talks about playing with their dolls Jennifer Rose and Mary but that's not who was there it was three little girls and they couldn't get the heater to work in the room and it so the heater was broken and gas had gotten into the room and killed the three little girls and so they were there just waiting for me gotcha and uh, what was the name of the episode the dead part of the house oh cool because I love The Outer Limits. It was good. It or was One Step really, Beyond, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah One Step Beyond. I loved beyond. them all. Yeah, Outer Limits was good, too. So I got that. That was my favorite, favorite. I like doing Three Faces of Eve, where I played Eve as a child who had to kiss the dead grandmother. That was kind of a fun part, screaming. I got to right. scream a lot. So <laughs> And I did like dying in movies. That really? was a that was, was that fun? good. Yeah, that was a big hit yeah. with me. <laughs> even when you even when you were older. Yeah, liked I mean, it. So yeah. you never you never lost the. I never lost the fun. that thrill. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So now I've asked you about all the good stuff. What is it that that you left the business for a reason, or was it just? Eh, I, I, they done. just didn't want me. And I really had never, I'd never wanted to be an actress. I was just, you know, I was. That's what your mom said you were going to yeah, do. Yeah. Well, that's, I got parts. So there we are. Yeah. And, um, and I liked doing it, um, but I did not like interviews. And I, I just was. I just left. I got married, and I became a realtor, and that's what I did for 15 years. And then we moved up north, and I had a goat farm. Cool. <laughs> so that's that's me. Now I'm just fiddling around. So it's party and all so the time now. I wrote <laughs> I wrote a book. Yes, I wanted to talk about the book. Kid. And so it's about it's about you know my career and it's a <laughs> and it's about you're really good at this have you done this before um, maybe <laughs> and it's about um uh you know screen actors guild and what we achieved there that that was important for me to talk about because there's so much abuse and and we we achieved something and that I, I'm very proud of. It's the thing I'm most proud of in my life. If I saw that book on the shelf, I would buy it immediately. Do you know why? Why? Because Sophia, Sophia Lauren's Lauren. on the cover. I, and that's why she's on the cover. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> because we all said Now that was some brilliant marketing. Yeah, was that your idea? Well, there were a bunch of us. Okay. All girls, by the way. Okay. And we all looked at it and looked at my stills and said She's the one. Yeah. She's it. And I said, yeah, everybody, yep, that's, I think so, too. No, that was brilliant marketing. Yeah. How long did it take you to write the book? 
Oh, it took me too long. You yeah. know, it was very painful. More than a week? Oh, God. <laughs> and I, I, my friend Liz Graham, who was the bad parent, she helped me write it and put it together. She's also an author. Oh, okay. And uh, if it wasn't for her, I, I'd probably still be floundering around with it because I'm not a writer. I'm a reader, but not a writer. Yeah. I love to read. And that's why I liked meeting Jane Mansfield because she was, I walked, I was dragged over to her dressing room and she answered the door and she had a book in her hand and glasses on. And I thought, and she talked normally, which I was surprised. (laughs) And, And so I thought, wow, this is a fabulous woman. Look at the character she does. Yeah. And here she's a reader. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of getting close to the end here uh, of just the show. But uh, <laughs> is, is there anything else you want to make sure oh, that, sure. that we talk about? There's a, there's a little film that I just have a small part in that is now on YouTube. It's done by Anthony, a young filmmaker whom I just adore. And uh, it's called Miles and Mimi, and Miles is Miles Kruger. And I'm not going to explain who Miles Kruger is, but look him up. He is a very, very famous and well-beloved man. And uh, it's a love story. And it, it is a darling little short film and, um, and it's entitled Miles and Mimi. Cool. And it's us. Cool. But we're not. Uh, we'll, we'll, <laughs> if, if it's on YouTube, you say? On YouTube. Okay, yeah. well then I will, I will pull it off of YouTube Good. and I will attach it to this interview. So Perfect. People, if that's okay with you. It's okay with me okay, and good. it's okay with Anthony Booth too. Well, I thought it might be if yeah. it's on YouTube. Yeah. So, and, and, and they'll tell me whether it's copyright and I can't use it anyway. So. No, no, yeah. you can. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Good. I always yeah. like those little treats like that. They're, they're little jewels that you find. I don't care to be an actress again, but this I just couldn't resist. Yeah. yeah. And, it, you know, if it's something that you're having fun doing, yeah. it's not work. No. You know, it's not a job. It's not. It, it was there's, sweet. there's hardly any effort involved in it. Yeah. So, anyway, okay, well, I guess that. Any, anything else we got? You. Did well, we forget probably, anything? You know, I'm so old, I forgot probably half I of it. I got socks older than you. <laughs> <laughs> and and check this out. We just found earlier before the show, we went to high school together. Isn't that amazing? The same school in the same grade. <laughs> and she was fortunate enough to never have run into me at that time. And he was fortunate enough to ignore me and think I was a dumb girl, probably. <laughs> oh, no. I, yeah, I would not have ignored you. So, Because uh, you were a little cutie. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble here, so we should probably wrap this up. Um, thank you, everybody, for supporting the, the, the studio and the show. And uh, don't forget all the other great shows. And I would be amiss if I failed to mention What's Your Story with Judy Morio. And I say that because she's in the studio and would slap me upside the head if I didn't say something about it. Right? Right. <laughs> Um, anyway, Judy has a, a great show here, uh, along with all the other shows. And uh, don't forget, this Saturday at 10 a.m., I'll be doing the book signing over at Barnes & Noble. You wrote a book? No, but every Saturday I go over there, and if you buy a book in Borders, I will sign it for you on the way out. <laughs> I have a little table set up, and so you, know, you can buy and any I'll book. Do that too. You, yeah, you can you can buy any book, and and I'll sign it for you. And hey. there's no charge. Oh, there's no charge. Well, Beverly so. and I'll charge. Anyway, guys, thanks again for supporting the the show and the studio. And um, you know where to get hold of us on WWDB TV. Uh, we're on Roku. We're on Facebook. We're on uh, we're on everything. So the you corner. can't you can't get away from us. Yeah. And um, um, Anyway, that's all I've got. How all about right. you? Hey, been Thank fun. you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. And and you are welcome here anytime. Thanks, John. Uh, anytime you're in town and you want to come on, if you've got anything that you're you're trying to publish or... or oh, you no, know. that's it for me. <laughs> yeah, that's what you say that today, but just wait. Something will happen tomorrow and you go, oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'll publish all this solicit... Solic-
Salicious. Is that a right word? Salicious. Yeah, the salicious stuff. The, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hey, and uh, thank you all again. And remember, if you're going to do it, do it with styles. Yeah. Nice work, John.